Okay, so this is suggested homework problem, position versus time to velocity versus time one. So PVT to VBT one. All right, so what you have in your homework is the graph of position versus time, and then we're supposed to make a velocity versus time graph from it based on the information of position versus time. So in your graph, you do have some numbers. You can certainly put those numbers into values in the homework. Um, I'm just going to do it rough and based on similarities but not the actual values. So as we are starting out on this position versus time graph, the first thing we notice is that the slope is zero. It is horizontal. The object is standing still. And standing still on a velocity versus time graph is at the axis. So there's our first part of the motion. We then have a constant slope, a straight line. That tells us we're at a constant velocity. The slope is positive, so our velocity is above the axis. So during this time, we have a steady rate, and we are above the axis. So our velocity versus time graph is telling us it's a positive value moving to the right or up. Corresponds to a positive slope, and it has some value that's steady, our straight line. The next section, well, that tells us we're moving in the negative direction. It's a negative slope. It's to the left. And it appears as though that slope is a little steeper, and you can see that on your notes as well. And so if this is how far above the axis we are, if we're a little steeper, we're even higher. So we have to be a little bit further below the axis. This tells us that we're moving in a negative direction, as indicated by that negative slope, and we're moving at a larger negative number compared to the previous value. Good. The next section is a horizontal line again. That tells us the position is not changing, and therefore the velocity must be zero. So we're back at that origin. The velocity is zero. In the next section, our slope is negative, so we're moving in the leftward direction. We're going to, again, be below the line. And if we compare this slope to this slope, we see that it's a little shallower, but it's similar to the previous positive direction. And so we are just as far above the line, below the line as we were above the line, representing less speedy than the previous leftward motion and about the same rate as the rightward motion to begin with. The object is then again standing still, so we're at a zero position. And then we see that we have a positive slope again. It's moving to the right, in this case moving towards, it was left of the origin, moving towards the origin, so that's to the right. And it's about at the same steepness as it just was moving to the left. So here is our velocity versus time graph for our object, and I'm just going to connect these lines to help you see it better. For our object, oh, and I forgot the last part. He's then at the origin, but standing still. And so there is our final velocity information. Now these transitions are appearing as though they're instantaneous, and in real motion we know those transitions are not instantaneous. We might see a little slope, a little acceleration during that time, but for the more general idea, we can see our graph transition from position versus time to velocity versus time. Good job.